Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, let's wrap up our discussion of electrons in a weak periodic potential. Remember that over the last two many lectures, we've talked about this problem in some detail. We talked about the case where the unperturbed levels are non-degenerate. In this case, we have a shift of the perturbed levels that's second order in the potential. We have also talked about the case where the unperturbed levels are degenerate. In this case, we found that there is a linear shift of the perturbed energies in the potential. So there's a much stronger effect in this case. In this mini lecture, let's uh, break this down and give a rather simple example so you can understand what's going on. Uh, at the end of the last mini lecture, we uh, derived an expression for the energy shift uh, of these levels that are degenerate. We found that the difference between the perturbed and unperturbed energies looks like this, uh, where the index J going from one to M indexes this set of reciprocal lattice vectors uh, that denote unperturbed energy levels that are degenerate. Again, this equation, while it looks complicated, is actually something you have almost certainly seen before. It's really just an equation for, N, for M coupled uh, quantum levels. So uh, let's, let's take a simple case where we have only two levels. Uh, again, you already know what happens when you have two degenerate levels that are coupled together in quantum mechanics. The degeneracy lifts, and this degeneracy turns into unavoided crossing uh, in, in the energy spectrum. Uh, so let's explicitly see how this plays out here. Um, so we have two levels, uh, K1 and K2. So the um, expression for the energy shift becomes B minus E0 of little k minus big K1. times C of little k minus big K1. This is equal to U of K2 minus K1 times C of little k minus K2. Why is there no U of K1 minus K1 term here? Remember, uh, we're setting U naught equal to zero by adjusting the mean value of the potential. The other equation is B of U naught k minus k2, c of little k minus k2. This is equal to u of k1 minus k2, c of little k minus k1. Okay. Uh, as we are prone to do, let us simplify our notation a bit here. So let's set little q equal to little k minus big K1, and let's set big K equal to big K2 minus big K1, okay? These equations then become the following, E of E0 of Q times CQ is equal to U big K C of little Q minus big K. It's easy to see that little q minus big K uh, is the same thing as little k minus k2. Also, E of E0 q minus big K times C of q minus big K is equal to U of minus K times C of q. Okay. Um, 
if the potential u is real, u of minus k is the same thing as the complex conjugate of u of k. Okay, uh, so this is a useful simplification as we'll see uh, in just a second. Um, let's now ask, how can it be that a degeneracy can occur in this system? Um, so, a, de a degeneracy will happen obviously when the unperturbed energies of these levels are equal, okay? Um, now, let me emphasize that big K here is indeed a reciprocal lattice vector. K2 and K1 are reciprocal lattice vectors, thus big K uh, is also a reciprocal lattice vector. Um, so, so strictly speaking, the case we're interested in is where the unperturbed energies corresponding to wave vectors Q and Q minus K are equal, and all other levels are far away. So by that we mean E0 of little q and E0 of little q minus k prime. It's much, much larger than u or uh, k prime not equal to k. Okay? So the only way for this to be true, the only way for these unperturbed energies to be true is if the magnitude of Q is the same thing as the magnitude of Q minus big K. Remember that the unperturbed energies are just, the unperturbed energy at some level little k is h bar squared k squared over 2m. So the only way for these two unperturbed energies to be equal is if the magnitudes of their wave vectors are the same. But we've seen this condition before. If I have some reciprocal lattice vector big K, the only way for a little q to be equal in magnitude to the magnitude of little q minus k is if q lies in a Bragg plane. Okay, so in this case, you can see it's explicitly clear that the magnitude of little q is the same thing as the magnitude of little q minus k. We talked about exactly this scenario when we talked about x-ray diffraction. Um, so it must be true that the projection of little q along big k is equal to the magnitude of big k over two. This means that q must lie in a Bragg plane. Uh, as we'll talk about more in this course, this means that uh, in the context of crystal lattices, little q must lie, for example, at the edge of the first Bill 1 zone, which is um, essentially half of the way from the origin to the, uh, if you like, first, the nearest uh, reciprocal lattice vectors to the origin, okay? So that's, that's interesting, um, and this tells you where you expect, in general, uh, these cases to, to occur, okay? So, So we, we can rewrite our equations for the uh, perturbed energies as the following. I'm going to write it in matrix form. Okay, so you can see clearly that this is an eigenvalue equation here. Uh, and moreover, this really corresponds to the case of a two-state quantum system uh, with some off-diagonal coupling element, uh, uk. Okay, uh, again, this is a problem that you've seen before. Um, on some level, you probably already know what happens. Again, 
uh, if I have a degeneracy between these two levels, E0 of Q and E0 of Q minus K, this off-diagonal coupling will lift that degeneracy and induce uh, an energy gap. So let's see that explicitly. Uh, we know how to solve this eigenvalue equation. Uh, the characteristic equation associated with this matrix is the following. Okay, uh, we know how to solve this equation for the eigenvalue E. Using the quadratic equation, we get the two results. Okay, these are the eigenvalues associated with this matrix. These are the eigenvalues of this, this problem. Um, it's easy to do a sanity check and you can see that when UK is equal to zero, when there is no coupling to the potential, the two energies are E plus minus is equal to E zero Q well, let's see, but E plus is equal to E zero of Q and E minus is equal to E zero of Q minus K, as it should be. Um, if the potential is not zero, then we have E plus minus is equal to a half E zero Q minus K plus E zero Q plus minus the absolute value of U K. Uh, again, we've used the fact that this term uh, vanishes in the case of a degeneracy, all right? In the case of a degeneracy, these are also the same. So we can say that this is E zero of Q plus or minus U K. So the picture to have in your mind then is that if we draw the cartoon of the energy levels, so as a function of Q, when we approach some value of K over two, which is the edge of a, a Brillouin zone, remember the, the energy spectrum, if we, for example, restrict Suppose this is the first Bill 1 zone here. We're restricting all wave vectors to lie in the first Bill 1 zone. Uh, as the wave vector approaches the zone edge, this is where this degeneracy occurs. Uh, if there is a non zero coupling to the lattice, this degeneracy is lifted and a gap of size twice UK opens. All right, so again, in the Bragg plane, uh, the degeneracy is likely to occur and it will be lifted by coupling to the lattice. Okay, we can also find out uh, the co uh, coefficients of these wave functions. Um, remember again, E plus minus is E zero Q plus minus U K. Okay, so E plus minus minus E zero Q is equal to plus minus U of K. Okay, why are we doing this? Well, remember the initial set of equations we wrote down, E minus E zero of Q, C Q is equal to U K, C of Q minus K. This means that plus minus UK CQ is equal to UK C of Q minus K. Okay, the other equation gives us something similar, E minus E zero of Q minus K, C of Q minus K is UK C of Q.
this is actually UK star. This is plus minus UK C of Q minus K. This is UK star C Q. Okay, so this uh, gives a clear relationship, for example, between two coefficients, CQ and CQ minus K. So we'll say that CQ over CQ minus K is equal to plus minus UK over the absolute value of UK. If we suppose that UK is real, then CQ is plus minus times the sine of UK times C of Q minus K. So CQ has the same magnitude as CQ minus K uh, and perhaps a different sign. So let's now explicitly construct an example of a wave function. So let's take a case where UK is greater than zero. Uh, so the wave function then, psi plus of r, is up to an overall constant, e to the i q dot r plus e to the i q minus k dot r. Okay, so in this case, uh, the two coefficients up to an overall constant have the same sign, so I pick them to be one. There are only two plane waves uh, for this wave function. Uh, these are the two plane waves. These are the two free electron plane waves that contribute. Um, uh, these are the two free electron plane waves that contribute to this, uh, to this problem of, of, of recoupling in the case of degeneracy. All right, so this is, if I factor out e to the iq minus k over two dot r, I have e to the i k over two dot r, plus e to the minus i k over two dot r. This is e to the i q minus k over two dot r times cosine of k over two dot r. So you can see that the magnitude squared, which is related to the electronic density of psi plus is cosine squared k over two dot r. It's not so hard to see that uh, the absolute value squared of psi minus of r, the other wave function is sine squared k over two dot r. Okay? In the case where u of k is less than zero, we have the absolute value squared of psi plus of r equal to sine squared k over two dot r and the absolute value squared of psi minus of r is cosine squared k over two dot r. All right, so let's make this even more intuitive and physically illustrate uh, what's going on here by drawing some cartoons of the wave functions and potentials. So, Let's suppose we have a potential that looks uh, like this. So I'm gonna draw a one dimensional cut of this even though it's actually a three dimensional object. So let's suppose the ions are sitting here, 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 and so on. Let's suppose that the potential looks something like this. Okay, so I'm supposing an attractive potential at the location of each ion. Um, this distance is two pi over k. Uh, notice also, uh, we can say that uh, for this case, because it's an attractive potential, u of k is less than zero. Okay, so let's draw what psi plus looks like. Let's actually draw minus psi plus. So I'm gonna extend these dotted lines. 
Phi plus looks like uh, the sine. So it looks like this. And the period is half the period of the lattice. Okay, so this sine wave has uh, period uh, twice 2 pi over k. The magnitude squared of psi plus looks like this. Okay, psi minus looks like cosine. Again, in half the period. What does psi minus squared look like? Okay. You can see then that it's not so hard to imagine that these two wave functions, psi plus and psi minus, would give different energies, uh, right? The electrons in the psi plus wave function are concentrated between the ions, whereas here the electrons in the psi minus wave function are concentrated right on top of the ions. So you would expect naively that the electrons in the psi minus state would have a lower energy than the electrons in, in the psi plus state, all right? So, this is really a physical picture for why coupling to a lattice uh, lifts the degeneracy between uh, two otherwise degenerate states. Uh, if there were no lattice, it's clear that psi plus and psi minus would be degenerate. But if there is, now you can very clearly see um, that these two linear combinations of the free electron wave functions are no longer uh, degenerate. This one, because it's sitting right on top of the ions, has uh, a lower energy than, than this one does. Uh, and that's really kind of an intuitive picture for why it is that these ha things happen at breadcrumbs, why they happen at uh, wave vectors corresponding to halves of reciprocal lattice vectors uh, or, or at the zone edge. Okay, this is the origin of the energy gap in materials. Um, this will finish our discussion of weak coupling to a periodic potential. This applies to many things like metals. Uh, in the next set of mini lectures, we'll talk about the opposite limit. We'll talk about the limit of strong coupling uh, to a periodic potential. Uh, we'll talk about the tight binding method of calculations.